of the Founder's vision and their character, I'd like to close with another challenge. It's not enough to demand non-intervention in our wars. We do it a lot, and we're really good at it. It's not enough to demand an end to wars. We have to start explaining to fellow citizens why these ends are desirable. For over a decade, we have recited over and over and over the mantra that we want Congress to declare all of our wars. Fine, great. Would the intervention in Iraq be morally and Christian justified if Congress had declared it? No. You have to go beyond the declaration of war. It would be wrong because we would not have been a humble people. We lack humility in our public affairs. We need to read great books, classic books. St. Thomas Aquinas is a good way to get acquainted with just war theory, Christian just war theory. My friend Lawrence Vance, who writes at BlueRockwell.com. Lawrence is an expert on this. Read him. Finally, American exceptionalism. America is not exceptional. Americans are exceptional. American exceptionalism has been used to justify the killing of hundreds of thousands of people in our name. I don't know about you, but if you're really pro-life, I'm not comfortable with teenagers being blown to smithereens by a drone strike. American exceptionalism has been used to justify a military that gobbles up, the conservatives tell us, a mere 6% of our GDP. I don't care if it's six-tenths of 1%. What is its constitutional duty? There is no federal government without the Constitution. What does it say? It says, warning, warning, Will Robinson, you may not appropriate money for an army for a term longer than two years. They warned us about standing armies. You've got a standing army around. Madeleine Albright tells us, well, if we have this army, we should probably find some place that we can use them. <laughs> we must explain to our fellow countrymen why we oppose the wars. That if we're pro-life in our mothers and our sisters and our wives' wombs, we are pro-life in Pakistan. If we have been attacked, of course we have the right to defend ourselves. No libertarian would disagree with that. Self-defense must be preserved. <laughs> Offense in the name of empire is not defensible. But you have to, ladies and gentlemen, you have to, to explain this, you have to go back and get on the moral footing. And I know this is difficult for some, and I understand, I do, I really do. I understand the opposition to, or people's opposition, or their reticence to embrace religion in our public affairs. I'm not asking, and I would not ask anyone to be religious in their public affairs. I would ask them to be humble and godlike in their private affairs, which will make them act like Christians in their public affairs. There is a profound difference. So yes, our history and the founders can guide and inspire our future, but ladies and gentlemen, we must have the courage, their courage, their character, and most important of all, their virtue.